an ancient story, a story that was before the time of men writing, a, a time when only there was oral. And a lot of these oral histories have been forgotten. But as a sadhu, I meditate and I chant channel Undao Du. And Undao Du revealed this amazing story that I want to share with you. The first of the awoken ones were not man. There were two species. Man actually were the third to become awoke. The first was the mammoth. And the mammoth lived and traveled all over the planet way before the time of man. And the mammoths are not afraid of mice. You know, the whole thing with mammoths is kind of a hairy elephant. And before they were hairless, right, an elephant ancestor is the mammoth. Um, it may even be a separate line. I don't know, right, on that. Um, kind of like us and the Neanderthals. We're not the same line. But the elephant and the mammoth have a common ancestor. And that common ancestor, I don't know what to call it, because I don't know the name, the Elo Mammoth, <laughs> all right, the Elo Mammoth, the elephant mammoth, Elo Mammoth, right? It's like the monk ape is the common ancestor between the monk and the ape, right? The common ancestor. Um, and if you go back further enough, we were all kind of a rodent, kind of like a mouse. So uh, the, uh, the mouse became uh, a kind of uh, creature that ultimately one branched into um, uh, the, the, the elo mammoths that then became the elephant and mammoths, and one branched the monk apes, which became the apes and the monkeys, right? So you think of this tree of life. And, um, and way before the first of the Awoken were these mammoths, right? And the mammoths are older than the elephants. And the mammoths had the hair because they had to deal with ice ages and other things. So they had this huge amounts of hair on them to protect them. And um, these, the, 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 the clan of the Awoken ones were called the Sadu Awoke Mammoths. And it was just one clan of awoke and they were kind of the oldest of the family of mammoths and uh, Shigamatra was the Omega was the last of them and Shigamatra and Undao Du are connected because the enlightenment of Shigamatra was passed to mankind and that is why in Hindu religion and culture you see the elephant can you guess what the second creature was right they live in the sea and in a lot of cultures, they're like our pet. Uh, that's right, the dolphin. And the dolphin also was awoke. And um, their awakening also came from it. And Shigamatra, when she was a little girl, right, a little elephant girl, she was, and she was huge. You got to think of Shigamatra when she was around, you know, uh, 10 years old, she was the size of a full grown bull elephant, right? And they're huge. The bull elephant's a huge elephant. That's how big she would have been. And her mother was even bigger than that. And Shigamatra wanted to be a dolphin. And she used to love to, you know, go in the water and she would sink and she'd put her trunk out of there. And I want you to imagine. And her, she'd see her hair kind of floating and waving in front of her eyes like seaweed. And she used to love the field. She used to try to grab onto the dolphins, which loved her. They were like, you know, playing around her and swimming around her. And uh, Shigamatra would be all tickly pink, you know, all, all giggles and stuff. And she'd blow uh, bubbles out. And when she blew, she could sink. And she'd bounce off the water, get her trunk up. So she kept the trunk. She was always afraid to be too deep, right, on it. She always kept in the shallow. But eventually, she learned to, in a way, swim as well as a mammoth could swim, right? And um, her parents and the, and the mammoths created the Silk Road and the Spice Road, like all the roads that travel all around the world. You know, we wonder who created those. It were the mammoths. Before man came, the mammoths created these paths. And they would travel all the way from Africa, way into Europe, up uh, through the, uh, the, the Fertile Nile and everything else. They would travel through the Himalayas and create the roads that took us through the Himalayas. And uh, one of the things that has been forgotten is um, 
the reason why pine cones grew everywhere in the world, and the reason for the pine cone, and that's why I have a pine cone here. Look at this pine cone, right? This pine cone, right, is, is designed to catch on to the hair of the mammoth. So as the mammoth walked through these pine forests, right, these pine cones would catch on to their matted hair and they would travel. And when the, when the, uh, when the, you know, when the elephant finally died, okay, um, the, the, the body would become this massive fertilizer thing and then there was a fire that activated and you had all this nutrition on there. So the pine cone, uh, most people don't know that, right? So you're hearing that for the first time. So um, Shigamathra is also the name for Everest. And that's where Shigamathra passed. Because you see, Shigamathra existed in the third age. We're currently entering, we're finishing the fourth age into the fifth age. And the third age of man, if you can guess the ages, the first age of man was basically the evolution of um, us from the oceans to land. The second age was from um, the evolution of us to the monk ape, right? The third age is the evolution of us, of us as Homo sapiens leaving Atlantis or Atlantis, right? And arriving on the coast of Africa. That was the third age. And the third age was the age was when the end of the Sadhu awoke mammoths. It was their end. So the Sadhu awoke mammoths reigned from the second age to the third age. And at that point, the mantle of enlightenment passed from elephant to Shigamatra to Undaudu. And Undaudu's story is a whole different story. You see, Undaudu ultimately um, ended up killing Shigamatra's mother, known as the Alpha, the Alpha and the Omega, right? The Alpha represents the, um, the mother of all the elephants, has all the history of all of it. Shigamatra was the Omega, meaning she was the last of all the, of the Sadhu awoke mammoths. And her knowledge, um, she wanted to basically stop uh, the evolution of man, which was, which was, uh, 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 the predicate was on her passing, on her death. So she set out to stomp out mankind. And uh, she traveled all over for many, many, you know, decades trying to stomp out all of man. She just couldn't stomp him out. And when she was a child, she was, you know, her mother was trying to say, listen, you're the Omega. Everything lies on you. You must, you know, figure out this 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 man creature because this man creature is going to devour the world the ouroboros the ouroboros is the snake eating the body right so the head of the snake is us the body is the planet right so the ouroboros you can see the snake going around undaudu here right is consuming its own self and and the and the, the matriarch uh, Shigamatra's mother is like, you have to. And Shigamatra got really upset one time. And she's like, why do I have to solve it? You're huge. You're the biggest, most strongest thing. Why don't you stomp out these Ourobora, Ourobora, right? The Ourobora has two names, right? If you go to Wikipedia, you'll notice it's known as the Ourobora and the Ourobora, Ourobora. Well, the, the reason why it's the Ourobora, it's the sound that the monk apes would make, right? And... Uh, they knew, the elephants didn't know what they were. They just called them there, the Uruboro, because they would go, Uruboro, 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 right? That's all they did, these little, silly little monk apes. So uh, the uh, Shigamatra, you know, um, uh, set out to not allow her passing by the hands of man. So she climbed what we call Everest today. Uh, Shigamatra is the, is the Sanskrit of Everest. And there, high up, she, she decided that she was going to be buried in snow. She was trying to get as high as she could. So maybe like base camp one, base camp two, she got up to there. And still today, Shigamatra is somewhere on Mount Everest, buried in snow. With her, the three sisters, Shadu, Shanu, and Sharu. 
the three sisters of the Great Mother that brought us from Atlantis to the coast of Africa and uh, who foresaw their death by Shigematra and uh, ultimately their voice, their agent was, was Undaudu. His name wasn't always Undaudu, it was Dadu. An is a sign of disrespect. You're an An, you're unworthy, you don't understand. So Dadu became Undadu, and Du comes from the tribe of Du. So Da, Dadu, right? Dao Du, right? Dao Du. So Dao and the tribe of Du. He's Dao Du. And, um, you know, so he became Undao Du. Um, so right when these three sisters died, he was very sorry. And she, he realized he was the one that uh, killed her mother. Because prior to his event of becoming Undao Du, which was this big celebration, this blood root moon ritual, um, they had to do one great hunt. And Shigamatra was found with the mother on the coast all alone. The rest of the of the Sadu elephants had left and they had just, and she, you know, uh, she stayed behind because she was trying to teach her daughter an important lesson. And um, when, when Shigamatra told her mother, why don't you stop the vow? Says, you know, it's like, well, you see that huge termite mound? It stood for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years, this termite mound. If you can stomp out this termite mound, which was about her size, it was a huge termite mound, then I will stomp out the Ourobora. And Shigamatra, being kind of arrogant and kind of youthful and young, looked at the termite and went, shit, I can stomp that out. So she went there and knocked it down and started stomping it out and everything. And, and she's like, look, mama, I stomped it out. And she goes, really? Look closely. And she looks down, and there's just thousands, millions of termites all over, just writhing and moving around and carrying their little eggs and offspring. And she's like, I got it, no problem. She's like stomping, 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 stomping. And she's stomping until it gets so dark. Well, whilst that stomping was happening, happening, you know, the scouts of the uh, Ourobora, the Ourobora tribe, the first tribe of man, the Ourobora tribe, um, came upon, you know, uh, this event. And the word got back and they got all their hunters from the three sisters who at that time were still kind of together. And um, they uh, attacked. And um, the Alpha, Chigamatra's mother, knew she was going to die. And she knew and that uh, this was her end. She'd seen it. And she was an awoke one. So she knew the moment... She saw the torches and she saw Shadu, this, you know, all these tattoos and stuff. And, uh, you know, um, and she'd been fixated because, you see, when um, Shigamatra said, well, why don't you stomp them out? What Shigamatra didn't know was the prophecy of the Urubur arriving and devouring the world had been an ancient prophecy of the Sadu awoke mammoths. And every year on October 10, it, start, it would start on October 8th of every year on our, on our calendar today. Um, it would start with um, the, the Alpha drawing a big circle in the sand. Here is the world. And the rest of the tribe would be around her and be staring. And all of a sudden, then she would stomp. There, the Ouroboros are coming to consume, and she would stomp. And when she stomped, I want you to imagine the tribe of elephants. They just start stomping, boom, boom, boom. As other, other um, 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 tribes of elephants, not a tribe, what is a group of elephant families? Other families would hear the stomping. They would start the stomping. And others would start the stomping to the point that the entire planet, you would be shaking under the stomping of a literally, you know, 100 million mammoths all around the world, right? Or a million, I don't know how many mammoths, 100, let's say 50 million, 20 million, 100 million mammoths, maybe 100 million mammoths. That's how big the mammoths were. They were all over from, from the tip of South, Af uh, South Africa to the tip of um, uh, the Americas to Europe to wherever they were stopped because the mammoths lived everywhere at that point. They could, it was where it was they could live. And 
the poor Urobora, which was still on the island, right, would feel this. And at the end of the day of just stomping, it would be like three days of fasting and stamping, right? It would be like this thing. Then the Urobora, she would put out this, this amazing, this, this uh, sound. Ooh, like a, this, this, like a, like a creature sound of a, of a thousand, you know, dragons roaring. And all the rest of the families would do it. And this crescendo would just go move around the entire world in this one breath. I had this cry of this monster. And this cry is what created this whole, you know, pantheon of monsters of, of the, we call Leviathan. And we, you know, and because we were on this island and from the waters, this roaring sound would come in every year on the 10th of October. And we would quiver these little, you know, these the home, on this island fearful what's out there in the dark scared to leave the island and it really was the you know the sadu awoke mammals were trying to keep us on atlantis well climate change was happening waters were rising you know the ice were melting and we were forced off and the island was at the perfect distance from land just far enough to keep us there until the time we had to leave and if you look at uh, yemen there's an island in yemen that would have been the closest place to it. And we moved to that location um, off our island. And that became the home of the oldest tribe. And now we know that with DNA, that our, the oldest human DNA is found on that island. Not only that, there's remains, six million year old remains that show us that even back then we were there, which meant that was an entire peninsula. And as the climate changed, the peninsula broke apart into this whole island chain, us being on one of them, you know, and over time, as the islands rose with the melting, you know, the, um, you know, the monk ape that became us, they inhabited all these islands. And the monk ape became, you know, Homo erectus, and then Homo homo erectus, and Homo habilis, and all these other different variations. And as the water rose, all these different variations of of us would arrive onto the island, Neanderthals being one of them, right? Common ancestor. We have a common ancestor, that monk ape. So that monk ape um, uh, uh, would inhabit the coast and our brain power and everything that we have came from us eating seaweed. And not seaweed, but seaweed and uh, 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 the fatty uh, uh, acids and fatty foods and seafood, not seaweed. We became, you know, fish eaters and crab eaters and everything else. So we evolved on this island. And you imagine we evolved on this island. Different generations would go out there and, the, you know, um, interact with the sadhu awoke mammoths. And when we finally arrived, that was on getting back to the, the father of Shikamathra and her brothers, three of them, came and confronted the arrival of the Urubura on land, that'd be us for the first time. The great mother and the three daughters, she held the three daughters and there they are and she's got, she's just one clan and, and these mammoths are coming down to attack them. And uh, because they were sea creatures, they were able to move, you know, uh, aqu you know semi-aquatic apes were moved. The elephants really couldn't do much in the water and they were slain by the javelin, which was a hunting instrument developed to hunt the fish to protect us from sharks. And this is why we had this deep fear of sharks and spiders and shakes and snakes. That's our deep fear, right? Because they were our predators. So there you go. Now you know, the Sadu awoke mammoths, the story of them and the lost history I've reshared with you from Undaudu sharing with me. Undaudu to you and yours.